What's up guys, Wade Willis here for Wade's Weave Reviews, here to break down episode 8 of Fruits Basket, the final season. And this episode crushed the hearts of every single Kyo fan, which if you like Fruits Basket, generally you're a huge fan of Kyo. We finally started to see things from Kyo's side uh, a lot more, a lot of questions were answered. Uh, to kind of the flashbacks we were having with Kyo, like covered in blood. We understand uh, why he's kind of feeling the guilt and what's kind of preventing him from moving forward with Toru. And I mean, we had had some hints kind of in the past, but we kind of get the full picture in this episode, and it's as heartbreaking as we could have expected. And guys, uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for tons of other anime reactions and review videos. Uh, trying to reach 2,000 subscribers, getting pretty close, so if you're not already subscribed, please uh, subscribe. That'd help a lot. I assumed like in this episode, Kyo and Toru were going to kind of discuss their feelings with each other. I did not expect Kyo just like right off the bat to be like, "Do you are you in love with me? And... I was like, wow, that was really ballsy, <laughs> in my opinion. And then we went off the deep end, seeing why Kyo is, like, upset that she could fall in love with him. Uh, and he kind of, like, references, like, oh, I thought your mom was number one. How could you, like, love me? Stuff like that. And we see that, uh, and we had already known that Kyo had interacted with Toru's mom in the past. Uh, but I believe Toru had never even known this. Uh, and so he's kind of telling her about how he met her mom. Um, and just the parts with uh, her mom and Kyo, like, especially in that, like, that first scene where they're, like, meeting each other is just so cute. Like, their banter back and forth is adorable. Like, like you gotta love Kyoko. Um I, as a character she's awesome she's not in the show that much obviously because she's dead but every scene that she's in she kind of like steals a scene she's just such an amazing character i really like her a lot we see kind of the bond that was developing uh between kyo and her and then we see uh why this kind of relationship uh like friendship like ended and it goes back to this day we know very well where Kyoko's looking for Toru and she's missing and we know what happens. Uh, Yuki ends up finding her. She gets the hat uh, from Yuki that actually was uh, Kyo's hat originally. And but now we see it from Kyo's side and Kyo spent like the whole night looking for her, searching for her, trying to like save her for uh, Kyoko. And when he realizes that Yuki was the one that found her, it just ruins him. Um, and we know, like, especially at that point in time, like, Kyo's perspective is that Yuki was just given everything. He's the golden child. Kyo is literally treated like the redhead stepchild uh, in the Soma family. So he just has all this hate and animosity towards Yuki, which... I mean, even there's a lot of adults who hold that. And later on, he goes into why he had the animosity towards him again. And he kind of used his hatred for Yuki to move on past the trauma that he had later on. But as a child, um, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, he doesn't know the full picture. And even still, he's going to turn into a monster. Like, his situation is um, kind of objectively uh worse than Yuki's even though Yuki did not have a nice life his that, that whole situation is horrible as well but um being the odd man out in the group of monsters is like a fate worse than death almost and obviously like I don't consider them monsters but that's how they kind of consider themselves so that's just why I use that term and then we get to the real part of the story we wanted to figure out which is like, what the hell was that flashback where Kyo has, like, blood on him, and we see that he's, like, in this, like, crazy intersection, realizes that Kyoko is there. He hasn't seen her. I, I mean, it looks like it's been at least, like, ten years. 
a car's coming and is about to hit her, and he can save her, or he thinks he can save her. We don't know if it actually would have. But if he does, he's going to expose himself as, as he considers himself a monster, but as part of the Zodiacs, where he turns into a cat. And he believes that Kyoko, like, while she's laying there, says, like, I, I will never forgive you. I, me, personally, I don't think that she said that, or, like, at least... If she did, the meaning behind it is completely different. I don't think it's not for for not saving her. I think it's probably for just running away um, in the past and just because of Yuki. That's kind of my opinion. But um, and even when Kyo is telling Toru about that, it's hard for Toru to really accept that her mom would even say that. And I, I think it's so out of the realm of her character to say it. I, I'm assuming later on we figure out what she actually did say. Not that it even matters, to be honest. Um, just if you know Kyoko, like that's just... Uh, and again, I, I don't know what happens, but I just find it hard to believe that she would say that and mean it because he didn't save her. He has been living with this and even had to use like a coping mechanism where he blamed like his whole life on uh, Yuki and like the death on Yuki and just all the, this weird warped thing to be able to move past this trauma that he witnessed. And just the guilt that one person would have thinking like, oh, I could have saved this person, but if I do, my life's going to be a living hell um, and not saving them. and. Kyo is actually a good person uh, because a lot of other people maybe wouldn't have that guilt that he has. Um, and I think it's important to note, like, as the car's going, there's a bunch of adults there. Kyo is still, like, under 18. He's technically a kid. All the adults run away and save themselves. Not one of them goes to try to save Kyoko. Um, and then he runs away once people are there. And, like, an ambulance is coming and stuff. And, like, people are trying to save her. Like, he couldn't have done anything there. And I, he kind of is hating himself for running away and thinking about how he always runs away. I don't agree with his response to run away there. But at the same time, like, the other people ran away then came back. Like, it's not like him running away did anything past that point, in my opinion. And I think it's also important to note, not only, yes, he saved his life, but I don't, I personally don't think, and again, I've only seen as much of Kyoko in, in the show as it has been shown up to this point, but she seems like someone, if her life was saved and then Kyo was like studied and, um, experimented on because they realized he was a zodiac and then they hunt down all the other zodiac members and start doing all these weird tests and just like exposing these people to society uh as monsters like i feel like she would have rather died and like those people to be saved and avoid that um than like have lived and had that be the uh the consequence of her her living that's just my opinion and like like i'm gonna tell you if i was in her situation like yeah i i don't want to die but i think most normal people with a heart if it's like okay you're gonna be saved but then like 12 other people's lives are gonna become hell and they're gonna be like tortured and like studied and it, you're basically it's if you guys have read to kill a mockingbird it's like to kill like 12 mockingbirds um, and maybe my numbers are off with the Zodiac thing, but you get the point like that. It, it, it would just be a horrible thing. And if she lived and he saved her, that is exactly what that situation would be. And I don't think she would be for that, but he's not seeing that situation, uh, from how she would probably see it or even how Toru uh, certainly sees it. One of the most emotional parts for me, and just like, I, I was, I was teared up like the whole episode, but like the part where Toru was saying, like, I don't believe that my mom would say she wouldn't forgive you, but she's like, and if, but if she did, like, I'm going to have to rebel against my mom, which 
is such a big deal for Toru. We know how much she cares about her mom and how much this struggle has been. But I thought that was like one of the most powerful like lines uh, in the series. Like that just, oh, it just gave me chills. I loved it. And uh, I feel like there's probably other people that that line really affected, but that was a game changer for me. And after we have this big long where Toru actually like opens up and says that she does love him and all of that stuff. He runs away. Yuki runs after him. And then uh, Akito shows up with a knife. And I'm like, I am not, I, I'm literally on pins and needles right now waiting for the next episode. My opinion, I, uh, again, I'm, anime only and don't spoil it for me i don't think she's gonna kill toru right there i think something's gonna happen um maybe shigure saves her i i just don't see them killing her off this early on i mean we're halfway through this season i believe i just don't i i don't see that happening that would be wild and i would be i would definitely lose my cool if that happened but yeah, I initially I had thought that Akito was going to like try to kill like Shigure or something, and then I'm like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Although that is Shigure's house, so maybe she just sees Toru there, and that wasn't actually her goal. But I don't get why you would go from killing Kureno, who like Akito loves, to like, okay, I'm gonna go kill Toru next. I mean, I guess maybe she'll explain why that would be her train of thought if it is, but. For me, I was thinking, oh, she's just so, like, out of her mind right now. She's going to go stab Shigure or something. But this was another amazing episode. This uh, season, I can already tell, is probably going to be my um, my anime of the year, which is kind of a cop-out because I had season two as my anime of the year. But I, I just don't see anything beating this, in my opinion. I am a huge fan of Higurashi, so I, I do have some hope that maybe Higurashi Sotes will be amazing as well, but I, I just find it hard to believe anything's going to top uh, this final season of Fruits Basket, and we still have more episodes left. But, yeah, guys, let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments below, and, uh, like, as you guys know, I'm going to try to uh, respond to every comment. Like, I, I love the this Fruits Basket community, and, yeah, love to hear what your guys' thoughts.